Okay, I think we'll get started here now. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to our virtual presentation on Churchill. Uh, now, before we jump into the presentation, I have a couple things I'm going to mention. Everyone is on mute, uh, and you might like to ask a question or two. So please type your question into the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen. If you're joining us from Facebook, you can type your question into the comment section. We welcome your question anytime throughout the presentation, and we will try to answer as many as we can at the end. Throughout the presentation, we will conduct a couple of pop-up polls um, asking for your participation by making a simple selection. If you are viewing on Facebook, the polls will not pop up. Uh, so please type your response into the comment section and your input is greatly appreciated and will help us going forward with future presentations and tour planning. And I see there's still a few people joining us, um, but we will start uh, the poll here. So our first poll will um, pop up here right now. And Okay, so we are wanting to know uh, if you would like to sign up for our email newsletter. From Facebook, you can send us a quick uh, email or hit the message button and include your email address and you'll receive invites to future presentations as well as timely information on new tours. You won't be inundated with emails and you can unsubscribe at any time. There may be a few more emails than normal right now as we keep everyone informed on our virtual presentation series. Just give it a couple more seconds here while everyone fills out the poll. <clears throat> Looks like lots of you are getting our emails already, so that's good. I'm glad to see you guys here tonight. Let's give you a couple more seconds here. Everyone can get their, their answers in. Okay. All right. So as Western Canada's premier motor coach touring company, Westworld Tours has been serving Canadians from coast to coast with escorted travel throughout North America and around the world since 2000. Celebrating our 20th anniversary last year, we offer quality components to all tours, including modern comfortable coaches, professional tour directors, experienced courteous drivers, baggage handling and excellent tour accommodations. Our tours include all the sites and attractions important to our clients. We also provide several meals throughout the tour. Thousands of passengers have already chosen Westworld Tours first class style of motor coach touring, enjoying the great value, security and stress free environment, all while making new friendships along the way. We receive a high level of satisfaction from our passenger surveys and I know our tour directors love seeing familiar faces on tour. You should see another poll pop up on your screen. And now we're wondering how many of you have traveled with us before? Uh, for those of you joining us on Facebook and are not able to see the pop up, uh, you can simply type into the comments, yes or no, if you've traveled with us before. Okay, so it's looking like 50-50 here. Uh, about half of you have traveled with us and half haven't. So welcome to everyone who has uh, traveled with us. We are glad to see you back and uh, welcome to all of you that have not traveled with us before. We uh, hope to see you on tour one day soon. Um, so everyone knows COVID has turned the world upside down with travel impacted as much or more than any other industry. With the health and safety of our travelers and staff being the highest priority, we are continually monitoring the situation. Having canceled all tours departures up until the end of July. And with that, we understand that your money you trusted in us may be better used for other things at this time. And to respect that, we have refunded everyone booked on a canceled tour. It doesn't feel right issuing future travel credits. After all, it is your money and you should decide when and where you want to travel, not us. With that being said, let's talk about Churchill. Churchill, um, this tour is running next year in August. So August 7th to the 13th of 2022. 
Manitoba's diverse landscapes feature the beauty of the boreal forest, subarctic tundra, and the Hudson Bay coastline. The native plants, animals, and birds add to this incredible experience. Start by touring the town and surrounding areas of Churchill. Visit the, um, I'm not going to say this right, but Coral probably knows it. I'm just going to say the museum. She'll talk a little bit more about it. And the polar bear holding facility. Board the polar rover in search of Arctic wildlife. Enjoy a guided tour to witness the magnificent beluga whales. Learn more about the culture of the northern people with their traditional and modern influences. Truly a unique destination right here in Canada and part of our maple leaf collection. And our second poll is here, I'll just pop it up here for you guys. When do you think you will travel to this destination or travel again? Um, for those joining us on Facebook, you can uh, type into the comments when you think you might travel either to this destination or just travel in general um, in the next one to two years, in the next three to four years, one day, or you're undecided. Just let people cast their vote here. Looks like there's some of you guys that are itching to get traveling soon. Okay. Perfect. Thank you guys for sharing uh, your answers with us. And now I am pleased to introduce you to Coral Carpenter Romanchuk. Uh, Coral has been with Westworld Tours for 20 years, having traveled the globe extensively, setting foot on all seven continents, bringing to her role as Senior Tour Director a wealth of knowledge and experience. And Coral is actually joining us live from Churchill tonight. Um, so Coral, I'll let you take it away. Thank you so much, Leanne. Pleasure to be here with you this evening, everyone. Uh, so happy to be uh, coming to you live from Churchill, Manitoba this evening. Uh, those of you that I know from previous tours and that have traveled with us, so good to see you again. And uh, those of you that I haven't had the, uh, the pleasure of traveling with or meeting in person, welcome and uh, certainly hope to travel with you someday. Um, as uh, Leanne said, I've been with uh, Westworld Tours for, uh, for many years for uh, just 20 years uh, as of this past April. Um, I do have a long history in Churchill as well too. Um, I came up here for the first time with my parents in 1991 and uh, returned uh, through several summers throughout the 90s and really fell in love with this town. Uh, when I'm not working for Westworld, I work as a local guide here in Churchill. I started doing that in 1999. And uh, so yeah, I guess I'm around 23 years now. Uh, I've been doing that. So, uh, so really, this has been, uh, been my home uh, since uh, 1999, but uh, it's still based partially out of Saskatchewan as well, too. So if you're wondering how a prairie girl ends up uh, in a little town uh, in the remote north, uh, that's how. Uh, just about two years ago, I uh, finally married a local as well, too. So my husband, John, is uh, a born and raised Churchillian as well. So it's a really, really special place. Uh, there's something about the north that's absolutely captivating. And uh, it is my great pleasure to be sharing with you a little bit about Churchill this evening, a place that I love very much. So thanks, Leanne. All right, uh, for our Westworld group uh, coming up to Churchill in the summertime, uh, it really is a unique tour for us. So we're traveling through some pretty remote area, relatively speaking. Uh, we're pretty quick here. We're going to look at a map and uh, you'll see uh, just a little bit more perspective of where Churchill is. But uh, it really does feel like it's a long ways up north, but it's actually on the 58th degree of latitude. So it's not really that far north, but it is extremely remote. So as you travel on the motor coach coming up uh, from Saskatchewan, uh, you say goodbye to the prairies and uh, farmlands and uh, it doesn't take too long before you're into the Canadian Shield, uh, traveling through miles and miles of, uh, of trees and into that uh, Precambrian landscape as well too. So plenty of time for things like uh, movies and games perhaps in the coach and that is just a beautiful shot there on the left hand side at the top. I really love 
love that one. Uh, just showing some uh, typical uh, Westworld uh, travelers just having a good time on uh, the bus. And that's really what it looks like. So it's, you know what they say, it's not just the destination, it really is the journey. And uh, that always holds true. It's something I really believe in. So yeah, we have fun on the, on the journey up as well. And uh, here's that uh, that map that uh, Leanne included in the presentation tonight. Uh, I really like this map. Uh, you actually have three perspectives in one. Uh, if you look at the right hand side of the screen first, everyone, uh, you can see our journey, our route uh, coming up uh, from the prairies and then uh, making our way up to the paw where the two are overnights. And then from the time we leave the paw, it's about another four hours of driving. And this is a pretty remote stretch, uh, driving between the Paw and uh, Thompson. Uh, I was just on it very recently again, uh, coming home to Churchill uh, from Saskatchewan. And I can tell you the road's actually in pretty decent shape. It's in constant state of repair. There was just construction on it again the other day. So, uh, so it's not too bad of a road. Uh, we do uh, make a lovely stop uh, along the way at Pichu Falls. And then in Thompson, uh, we board the train. So we'll talk more about that, uh, that journey up to Churchill by train. Uh, in the bottom left hand corner, that is actually a town map of Churchill. If you're wondering about population of our little town, we're somewhere around 800 people uh, thereabouts. Uh, the map in the lower left hand corner shows you the grid uh, of the town. Uh, it also maybe gives you a little bit of perspective that the town is extremely walkable. Uh, we are maybe a six or seven minute walk from the beach. Uh, we as local guides in Churchill too always jokingly say, you can walk anywhere in 20 minutes in town and that's true a lot of places you can uh, walk to in less than 10 minutes so uh, so very small and uh, very easy to uh, walk around it really does have a uh, a northern feel to it you won't find uh, fancy you know cement sidewalks uh, necessarily that kind of thing but uh, uh, but just a, a very nice feel it's an extremely friendly little town as well people say that to me all the time how friendly they find Churchill to be in the top right hand corner of the screen that's interesting as well because uh you can see uh you know up at the top uh the bay and then the what we call the river estuary so uh top left hand corner of your screen uh you're looking at uh, how the uh, the land kind of overreaches each other uh with uh with the bay and uh, the churchill river where it actually drains into the hudson bay uh just about a five minute drive from the town site so we sit at the confluence of the two so there you go. It just gives you a bit of perspective of, uh, of what it looks like up here. A uh, lovely stop that the tour makes on the journey up to Churchill is uh, Pichu Falls. Uh, Pichu Falls is only a little less than an hour's drive from Thompson. So you're pretty close to the destination uh, when we stop at Pichu. So a little break there, a chance to get out and uh, stretch your legs, maybe uh, have a little snack, a uh, glass of juice perhaps, and uh, just enjoy the beautiful waterfall at uh, Pichu. And uh, then you arrive in uh, Thompson. Um, that's a lovely mural there in the right-hand corner of the screen. I uh, just saw that again myself the other day. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, a northern uh, a northern feel, a northern uh, small city, Thompson. And that is our jumping off spot to, uh, to say goodbye to uh, civilization, I suppose you could say, and uh, join uh, via rail for our journey up to Churchill. Uh, depending on availability and uh, what's happening uh, come uh, 2022, uh, hopefully we will be able to uh, go back to giving you the opportunity to an upgrade to a sleeper. Uh, if you wish to do that, normally they do have uh, sleeper berths available on the train uh, if you prefer to do that over riding coach. Um, it is a long, slow journey uh, by Via Rail, but you know, I've met a lot of people that have come to Churchill over the years that the train ride was actually a huge part of the trip for them. Uh, a lot of people love a good train ride and uh, this really is that. I call it forced relaxation. Nothing to do but uh, talk to your fellow travelers or you know take a nap, read a book, uh, sit back and look out the window. Um, I think it's lovely. I love the train ride but it does travel over discontinuous permafrost in northern Manitoba going up to Churchill so it is quite slow and uh, we say 14 hours sometimes a little more so it, it could average about 14 to 16 hours overnight on the train up to uh, Churchill to arrive in our destination.
like to tell people as well to, uh, you know, not to be alarmed if the train uh, arrives a little late getting into Churchill. That's uh, that's pretty normal for us up there. We, uh, in fact, we generally expect the train to uh, to come into town a little late. So usually about mid morning or so, uh, the train arrives in town. Um, I know there's another shot coming up later of the train station, but uh, there's one shot there in the top right hand corner. Uh, it's a beautiful building. Again, later on towards the end of the presentation, you'll see a bit more of the architecture of Churchill. That is a heritage building. It is a heritage site in the province of Manitoba, uh, fully restored back in the early 2000s. But originally that train station uh, opened up, was, uh, was built 1929, that time frame. So the railroad track reached Churchill in uh, 1929. So beautiful building and, uh, and as I say, fully restored. Uh, when you first get to Churchill, we like to start to start touring with you right away and showing you around. And uh, one of the things that uh, we do during our stay in Churchill is what we call the town and area tour. Uh, now, as you can imagine, with a, a northern community, uh, we have to be a bit flexible. You never know what the timing's going to be like, uh, what the weather's going to be like. But we don't fit everything in the first day. We fit it in later. But we do a full town and area tour. And uh, I'll show you some pictures later on of some of the things we see. Uh, uh, on that town and area tour. Um, below the uh, the train station photo in the bottom right hand corner, uh, that is actually very typical of what the trees look like in Churchill. In fact, it just so happens for the uh, 20 plus years that I've worked in Churchill, that one has always been my favorite tree. That is one of my favorite photo stops to do for groups on tours. Um, the technical term crumholes effect, the nickname flag tree, uh, any of you traveled to places like Newfoundland, for example, you've seen a similar effect there. Uh, it really has a lot to do with that extreme north wind uh, coming at these trees and also the very dry hard snow that in a sense almost as though they were being sandblasted in the winter time. So they're white spruce and uh, that is primarily what we have uh, right around uh, Churchill is uh, white spruce trees. Um, in the uh, top left hand corner you see a polar bear statue. And uh, uh, one thing you won't see in Churchill, <clears throat> a lot of manicured green lawns, not in a northern community like this. Instead, you'll see lots of statuary, uh, pretty signage, just things to dress the town up and, uh, and make it look a little prettier for visitors coming in. Uh, but uh, we are famous for being both the uh, polar bear capital of the world and also the beluga whale capital of the world. And uh, we, uh, we can't predict uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, when or if we're going to see a polar bear. Quite often, though, uh, our summer groups have been lucky and uh, and have seen a polar bear in the summertime. And I'll explain to you why they're harder to see in the summer as we go farther on into our presentation, everyone. Uh, but the beluga whales uh, are amazing in the summertime. And as I say, we'll touch more on that uh, in a little while as well, too. But before we go on, uh, bottom left-hand corner of the screen, that's just a really nice uh, uh, kind of a photo overview of the town of Churchill. So in, uh, in the foreground, you can see some of that gray Precambrian rock along the coast. Uh, we, uh, we do have this uh, beautiful gray wacky rock. Uh, it's called considered to be some of the oldest rock in the world. Uh, the town site itself and then off in the distance looking out towards the Churchill River and the Hudson Bay, the uh, Port of Churchill, our grain port as well. There's a tremendous amount of history here in Churchill. Well that grain port, it opened uh, back in 1931, uh, but we've had human habitation here, it's believed literally for thousands of years. And then in a more recent history, uh, we have the history pertaining to the Hudson Bay Company, some of the stories relating to uh, the search for the Northwest Passage and more. And these are all things that uh, we're going to talk about and you're going to learn about uh, during your time in Churchill. And uh, what you're looking at here, everyone, are some of the highlights uh, that we see on our town and area tour. Uh, let's start maybe for fun in the top right hand corner. Uh, we have a, kind of a neat angle shot uh, looking at the, uh, the famous uh, Anukshuk statue on the beach. Uh, I know there was, uh, I think there's another picture of that somewhere in the presentation as well too. Definitely one of the famous uh, photo opportunities in Churchill. Uh, the beach is literally just up the street uh, from our hotel 
hotel where you're staying uh, during your time in Churchill. So uh, uh, for a good walker, five minutes. Uh, if you're not a good walker, maybe just a little bit longer than that, but uh, but very close to us for sure too. So the beach is nice and close. Uh, one of the, uh, the highlight stops, I would say for most visitors coming to Churchill is seeing a very unusual building and quite iconic at that too. And that is the top left-hand corner of our screen. And uh, that is the famous polar bear holding facility. Uh, it's local nickname. A lot of people here call it uh, the bear jail, but uh, it's a uh, technical name is the polar bear holding facility. And this is where not too often in the summertime, but uh, typically in the fall, in the months of October, and November, when polar bears are quite literally migrating through this town, uh, that is where problem bears are held, uh, where they're essentially detained uh, until the ice is formed on the bay and they can carry on their way. Uh, we are not allowed to take visitors inside of the building. It is uh, not there for tourism. It is there uh, because natural resources have a very important job working with the polar bears. But uh, we do see it from the outside and uh, we talk about it. You learn all about it. You see pictures of the inside as well. And you can see there's a gorgeous mural uh, on that building as well too. Uh, we have many absolutely beautiful murals around Churchill and I think most of our visitors and many of the locals agree that that is one of the most beautiful of all the murals. And uh, that one was actually painted by uh, a lovely artist from Winnipeg named uh, Cal Barteski. So that is uh, definitely one of the prettiest murals that we have in Churchill. So another really famous photo opportunity. Uh, in the center of your screen at the bottom, uh, if you've done any reading about Churchill or those of you who've been here, you've certainly seen that uh, the old C-46 uh, plane known as Miss Piggy that came down in the rocks just uh, a little ways outside of Churchill back in 1979. So uh, no fatalities on board. It's actually an amazing uh, local story here in Churchill. So definitely one of the stops on uh, our tour and then the grain port you see in uh, the bottom uh, left and right screens. And uh, uh, we do our best to get our groups inside there. And generally we are uh, very fortunate getting our groups to go inside uh, the uh, Port of Churchill for a tour. I say it that way because, uh, uh, well, it's recently actually gone under new ownership, but even when it was uh, American owned, uh, we were lucky enough to get our Westworld groups inside there. And uh, to a lot of our Westworld passengers, you know, who have uh, farming history, farming background in the prairies, it's a pretty big deal to uh, see the Port of Churchill. So uh, we're happy that uh, the port is actually open again now. It was closed for a little while, but it is open again now. It is under new ownership, and uh, we certainly do look forward to uh, taking more groups uh, inside of the uh, Port of Churchill as well. Yeah, and uh, moving on from that slide, everyone, uh, we are looking now at uh, another beautiful spot, uh, just a, a short ways out of Churchill. So uh, as I say, uh, a chance to see the Port of Churchill. Uh, we do this uh, town and area tour, uh, the area what we call the Coast Road. Uh, we even, during your stay in Churchill, take you as far as we can out of town. If you were to get in a vehicle and start driving around Churchill, the farthest you could drive away from the town site before you'd run out of road is uh, 24 kilometers. We take you all the way out as uh, far as the Churchill Northern Study Center and the site of Churchill's old rocket range as well too. So these are all things you see uh, on your tour. Um, just a little side note for you, something else that might be interesting, uh, economy of Churchill. Uh, a lot of people coming in to Churchill don't know that healthcare is significant here. Of course, the grain port is also a big part of Churchill's economy. And of course, tourism is as well too. Uh, as I was saying, there's a tremendous amount of history in Churchill. And uh, some of these stories, a lot of them actually relate back to a time in Churchill's history when the Hudson Bay Company was very, very influential here. Uh, so back in the 1700s, uh, Prince of Wales Fort was built. And uh, that's something else that you see. We'll see a photo of that in just a moment. Uh, but before we do that, uh, we have three national historic sites across the river, or excuse me, in Churchill rather to or across river I meant to say. Uh, Sloop Cove is a site that a lot of people don't see because it's quite inaccessible across river. Uh, but just a few minutes driving from town is Cape Mary gun battery. 
And that's what you're looking at, these uh, two bottom slides and also the folks walking in the rocks on the uh, top uh, left of your screen as well, too. Uh, Cape Mary has a, a gun battery that was originally built in the uh, mid-1700s to help protect the fort uh, across the river. Uh, the rival of the Hudson Bay Company, the Northwest Company uh, at that time. So a uh, big part of Canadian history and uh, extremely interesting as well. So, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I'm sure there are some of you who are listening tonight that have uh, visited Peggy's Cove out in Nova Scotia. Uh, the first time I went to Peggy's Cove several years ago, it made me very homesick for Churchill because it really looks a lot like that. So again, you can see this uh, beautiful Precambrian uh, rocky coast uh, with those rocks uh, really polished smooth by the activities of uh, glaciers uh, as they traveled over the land, essentially uh, polishing off the rock. Um, you see a few structures there perhaps uh, you can see that. Probably the one you can see most clearly in the bottom uh, right hand uh, photo is uh, a monument and uh, that monument you'll be up close and personal to. And this is a, a memorial to another part of Churchill's history. Uh, we have history here that relates directly to that great quest to locate the fabled Northwest Passage. And uh, one of the many men who searched for the Northwest Passage, uh, a Danish explorer named Jens Munk overwintered uh, just outside of Churchill across river back in the early 1600s and that's a memorial cairn to commemorate the Monk expedition. So again, these are all things we see uh, on what we call the town and area tour. Generally, we do a lot of this touring on your first day in town, but as time allows, we have to be really flexible, especially in the north, I guess. And uh, so we fit everything in as we're able to. Uh, but I'd be remiss if I didn't just mention briefly the, uh, the wildflowers as well, too. Um, we are famous uh, for the beluga whales and the polar bears that come to Churchill. The uh, the scenery, the landscape is strikingly beautiful. Uh, we are also probably one of the best places uh, to see the aurora borealis as well too. And the summer wildflowers are extraordinary. As we get farther towards the end of summer, the fall colors are also beautiful. Earlier in the summer, for just a short while, for about three weeks, it is an absolute myriad of color with all the different wildflowers. And one of the last ones to bloom is the one that you're seeing uh, in the photo on our screen, and that is the beautiful fireweed. So it's usually one of the last three, four uh, flowers uh, species to, uh, to bloom every summer and just carpets the landscape. So I just can't tell you how beautiful it, uh, it is, but it's, it's really special. And uh, we are looking here now, uh, we actually have a, a few shots here that are across the river from us, but we actually do get you across the river. Uh, if you were to come to Churchill in the fall of the year, it's extremely difficult, uh, almost impossible to get our visitors across the river. In the summer, that's not the case. Uh, you're taken across by, uh, by boat to tour Prince of Wales Fort. And uh, that's actually a really nice aerial shot of it in the top left-hand corner of the screen. It's a really remarkable uh, place and again built by the Hudson Bay Company uh, in the 1700s. 40 years of construction went on to build it. Uh, many of the men who helped with the construction, men from the Orkney Islands, and they were highly prized employees by the Hudson Bay Company. So, so many interesting stories I'd love to share, but we just don't have time to talk about everything. Uh, but I will tell you one little fun fact about that fort. Uh, it is huge. The walls are 16 feet high and 40 feet thick. So it is incredible. Um, it was in large part destroyed uh, by the French. Uh, however, it has been uh, restored uh, over the decades and appears pretty much how you see it right now in that uh, photo in the top left hand corner. And uh, we do have a chance to tour the fort. So bottom left hand corner, you have a really nice shot. And that's basically what it looks like on the approximately 10 minute walk or so up to the fort from where the boat lands. <clears throat> excuse me, and you have a beautiful field of, uh, of fireweed in bloom in the foreground. In the center of your screen though, everyone, uh, you're looking at uh, the boat that you'll be on during your stay in Churchill. It's called the Sea North Two. And uh, this is the boat that we use uh, for our whale watching excursions uh, for our groups. Now I said I'd comment a little bit more on the, uh, the whale watching in Churchill. It is extraordinary. Um, conservative estimates say that we 
have around 3,000 whales that come to Churchill every summer. Higher estimates say that it may be as many as around 5,000 whales that come here. It is amazing. Leanne and I were just talking uh, a little bit earlier today about how incredible excuse me, how incredible the whale watching is in Churchill. And uh, I have often uh, joked with uh, visitors on my tours in Churchill that uh, as humans, we feel like they're uh, people watching just as much as we're whale watching. That's exactly what it feels like. Uh, they're really pretty interactive. And if you've been whale watching places like Hawaii or Alaska, this is a really unique experience because there are so many whales out there. And if you're wondering what we are seeing for whales, they are belugas. Uh, it can happen for us to get other species in Churchill, like orca, for example, but uh, you have to be really, really lucky. It's pretty rare to have those sightings, but belugas in massive numbers. They're just beautiful, and uh, they're really quite interactive uh, with the whale watching boat. So can't say enough about how spectacular it is, but it's about a three-hour tour, by the way, uh, where you spend roughly half the time on the boat whale watching and roughly half your time over at the fort on a, a tour across river. Um on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you can see a polar bear uh, there as well too. And uh, as I say, um, it's it's unpredictable with polar bears in the summertime. And if you're wondering why that is, uh, let me tell you just a quick little fun fact about polar bears. In the summertime, they go into not a true hibernative state, but they go into something that we call walking hibernation, just a common phrase uh, that's used to describe uh, what happens with polar bears in the summer when their metabolic rate slows down and they become quite inactive. Uh, they're just trying to stay cool and uh, really not doing very much of anything, not even actively hunting in the summer, although of course they'll eat given any opportunity to do that. They always look a little dirty when we see them in the summer and you can see that uh, in that bear uh, in the, uh, the bottom photo there as well, just hanging out along the coast, doing what polar bears do in the summer, keeping a low profile. That bear was probably laying in the rocks, might've been laying in the kelp beds and uh, their fur does tend to get a little bit dirty uh, from that in the summertime. So they're harder to spot because they're not moving around as much, but we are always on the lookout uh, for a polar bear for you to see as well uh, on the summer tours. And uh, one final comment on this screen before we move on, and uh, that is in the center right hand of your screen. Uh, we're looking at a shot of the at Sanitac uh, Museum. I won't spell it, but that is the pronunci pronunciation. It's Sanitac Museum. Museum. Uh, if I have the uh, interpretation correct, I believe it's things of the past, something very close to that, but I believe it's things of the past at Sanitac. Uh, actually, every now and again, you do still hear it, uh, you know, mentioned by its former name, which was the Eskimo Museum. And uh, the name only officially changed a few years ago. And uh, it's a bit of a process. Some people still call it the Eskimo Museum, but officially it is the at Sanitac Museum. It's not a big museum, but it is amazing. And I I love that place so much. Uh, it's considered to be one of the finest collections of Inuit artwork in the world. Uh, amazing Inuit artwork inside. Uh, several stuffed and mounted northern animals like a polar bear, a musk ox, a walrus, for example. Um, fantastic, beautiful little gift shop inside too. Great little bookstore, great place uh, to, buy, uh, to buy soapstone carvings uh, as well too. So that is something else that we, uh, we take in uh, during our stay. Usually on the first day uh, we do that, but uh, at some point uh, for sure uh, you'll have at least an hour or so to spend in the wonderful at Sanitac Museum. And uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, another attraction that we have planned for you during uh, your stay in Churchill is a half day ride on, uh, on a, a big machine that takes you out on the land. Uh, so a rover or a buggy, uh, depending on the company, everybody has different names for their machines, uh, but that's what you're looking at. They're basically the same thing, uh, what you're looking at in the top left-hand corner of, uh, of the screen. So built on uh, huge uh, tires to inflict as little 
damage as possible onto the fragile landscape. By the way, the landscape around here is what we call taiga. Uh, we are not in true tundra, tundra a little bit north of us. The word tundra means treeless plain, and we have those tiny little spruce trees here, uh, even some, uh, some stunted willow as well too. So this is the taiga, which means the land of little sticks. So you're out there in the taiga uh, looking for wildlife, uh, enjoying the landscape, uh, again, the wildflowers. Uh, by August, all the beautiful wild berries, of which we have many, are coming into fruit as well too. Uh, but we're not just looking for bears, although that is the main thing we're looking for, of course. Uh, we're watching out for other wildlife as well too. You see the eagles in the bottom right-hand corner. It's very common uh, to see both bald eagle and actually quite common to see golden eagle here as well too. Uh, we're always on the lookout for them. Uh, the one in the top right-hand corner, that of course is the very beautiful and also very elusive snowy owl. You got to be lucky, uh, but we do see them from time to time. Um, of course, the caribou in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. There are caribou around here too, so we're always watching for those. And uh, that's an arctic fox in that center photo there in his summer coat. So they're harder to spot uh, in the summertime uh, in that uh, perfectly camouflaged coat, just like the arctic hare too, who are in a brownish gray color. But that is uh, an arctic fox fox uh, that you're looking at there and uh, generally by around uh, early October they are pure snow white and of all the arctic animals they are one of the very best adapted to uh, survive extreme cold conditions so these are all some of the other wildlife that you could see as well during your stay. And uh, this slide here, uh, I, I told you you'd see another slide that just kind of showed you some of the architecture and kind of what it looks like uh, around town. I mentioned that uh, beautiful train station, um, which uh, again uh, opened uh, 1929 was when the railroad track reached Churchill. So beautiful building, you see that there. Uh, there's some actually some lovely log buildings around town too. A pretty, pretty restaurant uh, and gift shop in the top right hand corner uh, below it another gift shop and uh, a dog mushing outfit there as well. So you have these pretty log buildings. Um, again, just uh, beautiful landscapes. That's actually a, a little hall that you're looking at on the left hand side of your screen. And uh, that's a little caribou hall, the uh, Boy Scouts and Girl Guides Hall with the totem pole out front. So you don't see a lot of totem poles in Churchill. It's a little bit different up here than it is in places like Haida Gwaii in Alaska, but that is uh, the one totem pole that uh, we have in Churchill in front of Caribou Lodge. So uh, very much a, a small town feel. And as I say, very easy to find your way, uh, find your way around, but uh, lots to see right in the town site itself as well. And uh, in just a few more minutes, uh, Leanne is going to uh, come back on and uh, she's going to tell you a little bit about uh, her experience uh, in Churchill, but a couple of shots of Leanne and uh, I mentioned, uh, you know, signage around town, uh, like the, uh, the classic polar bear crossing signs, there's a few of those, uh, no doubt you'll want to picture one of those while you're here. Uh, that beautiful uh, Anukshuk actually uh, there in the right hand uh, corner of the screen, just right on the beach. Uh, so just a few minutes walk from the hotel. Uh, definitely one of the iconic things to, uh, to take a photo of while you're here. So lots of statuary like that. As I was saying earlier, just to dress up the town, uh, quite a few of the things you see like that Anukshuk statue were the handiwork of uh, a one local gentleman in town. And uh, yeah, he actually uh, used a front end loader to, uh, to put that Anukshuk shook up. Uh, I believe it was around 2006 or so when uh, when that went out. So uh, so yeah, just down on uh, on the beach and uh, and uh, in just a minute or two, Leanne will tell you a little bit more about her adventures in Churchill. <laughs> Uh, before we do that, everyone, uh, for the last slide that I'm going to talk about, I, I just want to show you here uh, some of the murals around town. Uh, this is a more recent part of Churchill's history, uh, but it really has become something else that we uh, enjoy showing people on uh, their tour to Churchill, and uh, that is, uh, you know, the murals. They're really lovely. Uh, if I stopped and counted them all now, uh, we're probably close to around, maybe close to 30 murals uh, around the town 
town site, but several of them were done in a 10-day project in June of 2017. It was a project called Seawalls. And uh, I mentioned when I was showing you the uh, the photo of the, uh, the polar bear holding facility and that beautiful bear mural, I mentioned a Winnipeg artist named Cal Barteski. Uh, that lovely lady, she actually curated and coordinated the Seawalls project. Uh, some of the artists that she brought in were international. Uh, some of them were Canadians and uh, one was even a local actually. So the one in the, uh, the bottom left hand corner of the screen uh, done by a part-time local. He uh, he also guides and works uh, in the Yukon as well, but uh, very distinctive look. All of his uh, photos on the front of what we call the North Star Garage uh, in Churchill. So all these murals have names. I, I won't bother with any of that right now, but uh, yeah, um, you see uh, just the various beluga and, uh, and polar bear murals. Some of them are even of people, not that many, but a few are like the uh, top right-hand corner, excuse me, uh, yes, top right-hand corner of the screen that's actually a gentleman his mural wraps around the corner of that old building and uh, he's a man I know well that uh, is retired from working for the grain court now uh, some of the murals have uh, you know very much ecological statements attached to them or environmental messages and uh, some of them are just pretty pictures and uh, and that's what they are but uh, you also do see some old buildings around the uh, landscape uh, as I said earlier so much history in Churchill the military base, for example, too. So uh, old buildings still left behind, not a lot, but some uh, from the military presence in Churchill. Uh, that huge building uh, on both the top left from one direction and top right of your screen was originally used as a bunkhouse at one time, an accommodation essentially uh, at the grain port. Uh, here's a little fun fact for you. Uh, there was a radio station housed out of that building at one time, and uh, some Canadians know this, and uh, Actually, several don't. Uh, you're familiar, many of you, I'm sure, with the name uh, Peter Mansbridge, uh, broadcaster. He actually got his start uh, in Churchill, uh, originally uh, working for Transair at the uh, Churchill Airport, and then got his start as a radio broadcaster in Churchill. So just a fun little fact for you. And uh, yeah, as, uh, as we end this evening, everyone, as I, as I turn things over to Leanne in uh, just a moment, um, I was coming to you live this evening, uh, not just from Churchill, but from the Arctic Trading Company uh, gift shop. So uh, just a, a huge thank you to our friend Penny, uh, who, uh, who let us use the Arctic Trading Company gift shop uh, as a backdrop here in Churchill. I'm actually sitting in the slipper room uh, tonight, and uh, I was eyeing uh, these ones up uh, earlier uh, today, thinking uh, I'd really like to, uh, to own these. But uh, anyways, this uh, room is full of uh, beautiful uh, gauntlet mittens, like I just showed showed you uh, beautiful uh, mucklucks and, uh, and slippers. Uh, those are all handmade here in Churchill. They have seamstresses that, uh, that work in here and, uh, and do all this, uh, this beautiful work. So this is uh, the Arctic Trading Company gift shop if you did wish to go online and, uh, and have a look. So, and uh, in closing, before I turn it back over uh, to Leanne, everyone, uh, I just wanna say um, a little town like Churchill, there's something about the North and uh, it's interesting how many people have come to Churchill from a lot of different places, people from the US, uh, Australians, uh, Portuguese, uh, Hong Kong, so many different people have settled in this little town. Some people stay for a few years. Some people stay literally for generations, like uh, my, my husband's family. So uh, there's some kind of a magic, I think there really is. Uh, you know, the, the spell of the North, I guess you could say. So there's something that really captivates people and draws people like me in. So it has for many years been my absolute uh, privilege to show people around this very, very special place. So thank you for being a part of our Churchill presentation tonight, everyone. And uh, I would so love to show this very special place to each and every one of you. So thank you, Liam. Perfect. Thanks, Coral, uh, for, for showing us around Churchill. And uh, lovely. I'm eyeing up those mucklucks in the background. They really uh, yeah. look really nice. Um, so normally we would um, share some past passenger reviews on uh, this tour, but seeing as I uh, visited recently or not too long ago with my family, I thought I would share my own personal experience. Um, so like Coral said, it's a very unique um, 
place to visit. It's it's a small town feel, um, friendly people, and just a really wonderful tour. Um, you'll see the taiga um, in the top left-hand corner um, with my kids sitting there um, nicely. And uh, we we did the um, the beluga whale tour, which is a little bit different than what we do on the West World. We did a zodiac tour, uh, but like Coral said, these little um, friendly belugas come right up to you and uh, it's, it's a really unique experience and I would say that's one of the highlights of the trip uh, for me and for my for my kids that was uh, a really special time on the on the zodiac visiting the beach uh, it's nice uh, like Coral said it's just a short walk from the hotel uh, so you can walk down there and uh, explore the beach pick some rocks you can see the belugas actually from the shore so that was really, really fun to see um, nearby. Um, you also have the opportunity to visit, um, or I should say step inside the, uh, the polar bear, um, I guess, jail uh, cage that they catch them in when they are being naughty. And uh, just, just a really cool, uh, of course, the kids had to jump in there um, and dip your toes into the, the Hudson Bay. Um, I don't think Coral mentioned, but um, do you want to go ahead and, and you can talk about that? Uh, you can tell them, Leanne, if you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so when you dip your feet into the Hudson's Bay, it's technically none of it. Um, so that's uh, a really fun fact and uh, something fun to do when you're in Churchill. The water is ice cold, uh, but while we were there, um, there were people full on swimming. So uh, we thought they were a little bit crazy, but it was it was a fun. The kids enjoyed uh, splashing around in the water. Uh, very cold, though, but um, very interesting. We were lucky enough to see a bear, actually a couple bears. And like Coral said, they are dirty colored they blend in very very well with the rock uh, so you really have to keep your eye out and uh, try to spot them but it was it's a it's a very unique experience um, and this is one of the tours um, with Westworld that we do have um, children join um, every once in a while we'll have um, grandparents or, or a family bring their their children along and uh, this is a very appropriate uh, tour for children and uh, my kids loved it. So and they, they continue to talk about it and share their experience. So it was really a special place for us to visit. Now, um, as we mentioned um, earlier, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about our commitment to safe travel. Uh, so when the world was turned upside down, Westworld Tours was there for you by ensuring all canceled tours were refunded in full back to you. And we want you, our guests, to experience the best. And just as we were there for you in the beginning, Westworld Tours will be there for you once again to welcome you back on board. Um, and so our priority here at Westworld Tours is to ensure that our health and safety is um, priority. And while you're ex exploring, experiencing, and creating lifelong memories. With your welfare being top of mind, Westworld Tours has enriched, enriched our already robust health and safety protocols, giving you that much needed confidence to travel again. Now, with that being said, we don't anticipate uh, to be back on the road again until everyone is vaccinated and it's safe to be traveling. In the meantime, we're making sure our protocols are in place and we will be doing all the extras to keep everyone safe. And um, as we wrap up here, we hope you enjoyed our presentation on Churchill this evening. And we hope that you can join us as we continue our series of virtual presentations. Uh, so coming up, we have next week on Wednesday, May 19th at one o'clock, Cindy, uh, one o'clock Saskatchewan time, I should say, Cindy will be joining us with a special guest from Ireland to talk about the Women Explorers, Shamrocks and Shenanigans tour to Ireland. On May 26th at 1 p.m. Saskatchewan time, we will be joined by our friend from Iceland to hear more about that bucket list destination. And on June 2nd, we will learn more about our new Hawaii tour, Exploring the Islands. So um, you can drop a comment into the question and answer box um, and let us know what tour you would like to see a virtual presentation on, um, or if there's some tour that you would like to see added to our lineup. And we appreciate your feedback and are always looking for new tour ideas. 
So once again, thank you for taking the time uh, with us this evening. We hope you found our presentation informative. Uh, we hope to see you one day in Churchill. I know Coral uh, would really enjoy that. Um, and we will be following up with you in a couple days. Um, it will have the link to the itinerary um, on our website. And you can also visit our website uh, at westworldtours.com uh, for more information on this tour or other tours. And um, you can also find us on Facebook or you can contact your local travel agent and uh, find out more about our tours. So now we are going to answer. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna say, we're gonna answer some of the questions. If you aren't able to stick around, you can send us an email at information at westworldtours.com and we can get back to you. But uh, we will jump into questions. Okay. Um, so Dan asks, can one get to Fort Churchill on your tours if there's anything left of it? I was stationed there in 1963. Yes, Dan, uh, we do visit. Coral uh, mentioned that. I think you asked that a little bit before she touched on the Fort Prince of Wales. I can, uh, yeah, I can just say uh, an, another word about that, Leanne, if that's okay. Um, sure. Yeah, um, there's not a lot left to see, but uh, but what there is, we do we do drive around it. Uh, where the polar bear holding facility is, facility is located is literally right on the edge of where Fort Churchill sat. And most of those buildings were bulldozed to the ground. So the majority of them are gone, but you definitely see where Fort Churchill was. We do talk about it and uh, we do see some of the buildings around Around the landscape uh, that are still remnants of Fort Churchill, the military base as well. Perfect. Okay, uh, so Mary Lee asks, what months do you do the Churchill tour? Um, so Mary, normally we do that in the summertime. Uh, next year will be August. Sometimes we do it at the end of July. Um, and then the best time to see the winter polar bears would be October, November. Uh, we will, we don't have a tour coming up um, this year for the winter polar bear season. Uh, we might have one next year, so stay tuned for that. Um, and, uh, there, and there is a small chance that you will see polar bears during the summer tour. Uh, but again, that's not guaranteed. As Coral said, they're kind of in their hibernation and they blend in a little bit better than they would um, normally. Okay, I think that was it here. Oh, there's some in the chat. Um, okay. Fern said, oh, thank you. Very interesting. Good. Okay. Uh, Dean, was there any questions on Facebook that you saw? Okay. Well, if there are no sorry, more sorry about that, oh, I, no, I wouldn't, okay. I wouldn't have mute. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I think that's, uh, there was a couple, but I think they've all been answered. So I think we're good. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, perfect. No, that's okay. Perfect. I think that was it. So Coral, once again, thank you for uh, joining us and uh, for the to the Arctic um, Trading Company for letting you um, come live from there uh, with all the, the beautiful local made products in the background. So once again, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you all again next week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for uh, letting me share a little bit about this uh, very special place with you. It was my great pleasure. <laughs> Take care, everybody.